Hi there, my silly kitty. You want to do a video with me? Yeah? You want to check out the radios? Yeah. You want to check them out too? Radios. We use these to drive our cars. They come in all kinds of different freaking shapes and sizes, prices, qualities. RTRs, some are custom, and sometimes you just gotta wonder, do we need this many radios? Well, the answer is no. I mean, once you get far enough into the hobby, you're obviously gonna want to upgrade your radio. First, I upgraded to, uh, if you can call it an upgrade, uh, this Flysky GT3B a few years back. I got it for around 40 bucks. I think they're around 45 now on Amazon. At the time, it was a good purchase, but uh, as things wear out, uh, like uh, my throttle and trigger brake here, there's supposed to be more of it there. Sometimes you just gotta wonder, is there one radio that can rule them all? I'm gonna try to answer that question today. Last week, I got this. Got on pre-order about a month ago and finally got it last week. And I have really been wanting to try it out. So, guess what we're gonna do? That's right, we're gonna check it out. So I first heard about this radio while I was scrolling through uh, my YouTube feed and I decided to just give it a quick little look. And I had been thinking about upgrading my radio for a while. Like I said, I've been using uh, this Flysky GT3B. Like I said, it's not a bad radio. It was an upgrade from you know the other radios that I've been using. Uh, 10 different models and a number of settings that you can adjust. Uh, model name, uh, servo reversing endpoint, essentially all the basics here. But like I said, I had broken part of the uh, the throttle trigger here and uh, uh, I was looking to upgrade a little bit. So I pre-ordered this. Um, it was about 130 bucks before taxes and shipping. Um, and from what I've heard so far, it is supposed to be a really freaking nice radio. And I also bought this primarily for the range because one of the places that I like to run at um, is known for a fair bit of interference. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna be able to overcome that and if it's gonna be prone to the same interference, but we will see in time. So let's take a look here. I've, I've been naughty and I've looked at it a few times. So yeah, I've been able to feel it a little bit. Um, there are adjustments here, so you can loosen this screw and adjust the forward and back position of your throttle trigger. Uh, this adjusts your spring tension of the trigger. Uh, there's also an adjustment here for the tension on the wheel. A little bit nicer feeling and quite a bit lighter than, uh, like I said, my, my fly sky here, but we can get to a comparison later on. Now, I bought the ELRS version because I was also wanting to replace my receivers. Granted, I probably could have just gotten the 4-in-1 and, you know, just used my FlySky receivers. Ah, this is where all the goodies hide. So, comes with a three-channel receiver. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, an expansion module from what I've been hearing online. I forget the exact name of what this is for. Uh, I think it's for range extension. A uh, pair of toggle switches that fit right down in here. So if we just take that off, uh, and then through this little foam piece here, you can route the wires, and if we remove this little battery tray here. By the way, I did elect to go with the 18650 batteries versus, you know, a lithium pack. There's your expansion plug. So yeah, there comes with two of those. Like I said, there's one here that is just a pair of toggle switches and one that's uh, like a little video game joystick, a charging cable, and a lanyard. And 
And by the way, that's where you charge it. Not, not uh, up in here. This is where you go to upgrade your firmware. Now there is a variety of batteries you can run this on. Uh, like I said, right now I'm just using the 18650s, but you can run this on a two cell LiPo or even a two cell lithium iron. Uh, the only caveat with using a two cell lithium iron is you will not be able to use this charging port here without destroying your battery. All right, let's turn the sucker on. I've been waiting for this. Welcome to HTX. Stop. Okay. I suppose we gotta go over the, the buttons here. So there's one, two, three different switches here. This is a three position toggle. Uh, these are all trim switches. You have a couple of knobs here. By the way, you can rotate this part here that contains your antenna so you can get better range. Before I get too far, um, there's a strange thing that Radio Master has done because from what I've read up on or heard about them so far, they they actually make drone radios. So channel one is the throttle and channel two is the steering. Um, let's see. Yeah. So this has an operating system that I am completely brand new to called Edge TX. Um, or actually two pieces of software. Edge TX and uh, Express LRS um, coming over from the surface world, I'm not familiar with those at all. So I'm gonna have a bit of a learning curve with this. But for right now, what I wanna go over is um, setting up like a Expo uh, uh, endpoints and essentially do a range test on this because that's primarily what I bought it for. And then also see uh, how well it does on the track versus my old trusty fly sky. And the car I'm going to be testing it on is going to be my B74.2D. One eternity later. Oh boy, the um, the last couple days with this radio have been quite an adventure. Um, especially with this car for whatever reason. Uh, I did actually put the receiver in a couple cars, a couple other cars, because I was having issues that only appeared on this one. I'll kind of go over it uh, quickly. So, the... Uh, the output for the steering servo, for whatever reason, if I booted it up, and then plugged the servo in, the servo would act normally. But if I had the servo plugged in on power up, it would do this number on startup. And then when it finally booted up, it'd do this. And I couldn't really steer. So I asked for some help from the uh, ELRS community and they suggested that I put the servo on channel three. And that solved it. Uh, the other thing that I had going on was apparently I had so much timing on my motor that it was overwhelming the BEC and the capacitor in my speed controller for whatever reason, and the receiver would lose power. Hello, this is me editing the video. Um, I would later find out after testing and killing the speed controller that the negative wire on my servo wires was all chewed up and was probably the main leading cause in my browning out of the receiver. So if you buy one of these, make sure the servo wires on your ESC are all good and then that should help prevent this issue here. Anyway, back to the video. Thank you. Whoops. 
Oh no, I popped it. Oh no. I broke my steering. Huh? I broke my steering. Oh no. Ooh. Oh, the nut came undone. What? Everything works perfect at home, and then as soon as you get here, nothing wants to work right. Yeah. Especially my four wheel today, I'm trying out a new radio and it seems to reveal a bug in my speed controller for whatever reason. Keeps cutting out and then getting stuck at full throttle when it does. Oh. That's never good. New. No. So first thoughts after writing this radio for a few sessions. Uh, first off, very nice feeling in the hand and not overly heavy, which is, I think, kind of important. And that's also helped, uh, I finally figured out why they make the lanyards so short. So you can just put it in your hand and it adds a little bit of extra security in holding your radio. Um, the feel of the wheel it feels more consistent than my fly sky uh, feels a lot more secure as well and not wobbly uh, i do like the fact that it has a foam grip instead of a uh, hard rubber uh, i think that's especially important for when you start racing hard because you're gonna end up gripping that wheel a bit tighter and it'd be nice to not have sore fingers afterwards uh same thing can be said uh with the throttle trigger um mainly because the um front portion of it isn't broken off like on my fly sky and uh it also doesn't feel quite as heavy uh even after turning up the spring tension uh but i think i'll probably end up liking that better in the long run because then um uh, as the race goes on i won't be you know struggling so much to keep it at full throttle not that it is to begin with um the functionality Let's get this off my wrist. The functionality of this radio is just something else. I doubt very much in a racing setting alone I'm going to be able to use everything. Uh, 60 models. Uh, I don't... It's going to be a long time before I have 60 cars. Um, but if we just... Pro blah, 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 blah. If we just kind of go through some of this stuff a little bit... And uh, just kind of see what all is on here. And, like there's timer. The timers are the first thing that I turned off. Um, the E limits and E trims. I don't know what they do. But you can even change the mode of the the internal RF, the baud rate. Uh, outputs. Um, 
I'll just we'll go into channel three because that's what I have my steering set to. It's nice that there's like a finer step in this, but the the feedback you get from the trims isn't quite instantaneous. It's harder to read versus my fly sky. But I think if I was to go back to the to the first page here, actually no, here we go. Second page. Trim step, I can change that to probably medium. It should give me a whole 1% change. This is also gonna take me some time to learn, but I have been able to figure out a few things like packet rate, um, switch mode, maybe. Maybe not. Uh, power, Wi-Fi connectivity, um, enabling the Wi-Fi mode on the receiver. Backpack, no idea. Bind function. Yeah, there's so much to the software on this radio that I have no idea about yet. But I will probably end up learning as time goes on as I get different cars and end up doing different things with them. Anyway, that's just kind of my thoughts on the Radio Master MT12. Uh, I'm definitely going to be using this uh, for my main radio and all my races and just driving in general. Um, I God, it, it feels so freaking good in the hand. I I just can't get over it. Um, but yeah, def. Oh, one more thing. I finally figured out why uh, I was getting the power losses. So this is the ESC that was in my four-wheel drive buggy. Uh, I, I kind of finished it off during the little practice session where I was testing it. And uh, I found on the negative wire, um, it's all chewed up to beat hell. So yeah, if you're gonna get this radio, make sure your servo wires are in good shape. Otherwise you'll get that, that problem that I had. Anyway, this has just kind of been my first thoughts on the Radio Master MT12. Um, as I find out more stuff about this radio and I find it interesting enough, I'll probably make a video on it. Uh, but for now, uh, would I get this? Would I recommend this as a race radio? If you're on a budget, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it has a lot of the adjustments that the ex more expensive radios have, like um, spring tension, your throttle, and your steering. You can even uh, shift the position of this throttle trigger and shift it forward and shift it back. It's not a whole lot, but it does make a lot of difference on the feel. Anyway, if you liked the video, be sure to give it a like. Uh, if you want to see more content here on the channel, uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications. And I will see you at the next race. Bye for now.